Hello there, in this video I'd like to share with you how I started using Beaver Builder shortcodes with Dynamic Website Builder to create really flexible headers and footers. Um, now shortcodes, what they do is they allow us to take content that we've created with Beaver Builder, such as a row or a module, be able to save that as a template and then use the shortcode to take the ID of that template and display it anywhere else we like in the theme. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to use Beaver Builder's uh, layout power, uh, an easy way of um, creating lots of uh, beautiful content and combining it with the power of Genesis. And that is that Genesis allows you to have lots of hookable areas in your theme where you can add widgetized areas and you can also set conditions on when those um, widgetized areas show. So Genesis is very powerful there and Dynamic as a child theme for Genesis uh, makes that whole thing a lot easier because it just speeds things up as you will see as we go on. So uh, I've already created uh, the sections I want for my footer uh, and I've created two. Now the reason is in this scenario I want you to imagine the situation that we need a big fat footer to show on all of the pages but when it comes to the blog posts uh, we want a different footer altogether for those posts. We'll assume we've got a different audience for the blog. Okay so that's what we're kind of trying to achieve here. So first thing I would do is to open up any page and create this uh, content as I have. I've done this on a, an about page and I can delete it later. And then I would need to go into the row that I want to save as a template and let's go into row settings. And to do that we need to go to save as, we click on that it's going to next ask us for the name. Now I make sure that I call it something where I know what this looks going to be. So I've called it, I've already done this, I've called it Fat Futter. I can capitalize it knowing that the slug will take the capitals out and where I leave a space it will add a dash. So by writing Fat Futter here I will get Fat Dash Futter. I'm not going to save it as a global because I'm displaying this through the theme so I'm not dragging these out and, uh, and changing them in individual pages it's actually going to display in the theme so globals aren't needed so I shall forget that and I've already done this job so let me just show you that they're now displaying over in the save rows so fat footer and post footer so having done that uh, as they're saved I no longer need them in my content area so I'd probably just delete these and leave that blank and save and the next job now is that I need to create my widget areas where I'm going to place the short codes for these so I'm as you can see in dynamic we've already got uh, the official footer area here so I'm going to make this fat footer display uh, just above it so just before the uh, footer here so the, the next thing I would do is I would go over to uh, the uh, dynamic custom option so we go to Genesis dynamic custom and we we'll go in here now it doesn't matter which job we do first here we decided that we needed a conditional um, so I'm going to make those first we, we wanted a condition where we only show certain content on pages and certain content on posts so first one I need is is page and that just creates my condition and I need another, so I'll add one for is single post. So once I've got those created, I can go over now and I'll just save this just to make sure this is correct. Sometimes this goes a bit odd. Okay, and now I need to create my widget areas and I'm gonna create two of those because that's where I'm gonna place my short codes for each type of footer. So the first one I need, and I've already done this, is fat footer, so I select this. Then we move on and this is where dynamic makes it so much easier over Genesis because it provides this quick way of putting this code in. Otherwise you would have to do this with a code editor and copy and paste in uh, the, the actual uh, the code here. But dynamic just speeds this whole process up for us. So and lets us know what's available in Genesis 2. So I need to hook this in before the footer and I know this is near the bottom. Uh, I need to put it into Genesis before footer and add that 
So now we also need to select our condition, which we've just created, which in this case is page. Uh, so we only select that one and we'll need to create another one for the post. Let's just put this in post footer. OK, and we need to select the same area. So we go down to uh, Genesis before footer and this one we are selecting the other one. This one is for our single post. So we shall save those out and that now if we go over to appearances and to widgets it's now created as those widgetized areas in the back here. So there we are we have fat footer and post footer uh, which because I created earlier I'd obviously stuck a calendar in there. Now I've, to speed things up a little bit more I've already selected out the short codes which are here so um, I've put them in inactive widgets so this one is the fat footer so I'm just going to drag that up and put this into fat footer and using the text file and that's the post footer one so I'm just going to drag that up and put that in post, post footer. Now I should just briefly mention what this looked like so um, what I've done and all the explanations are over at the Beaver Builder site over here. So you just type in Beaver Builder short codes and you'll find this page quite easily. So in this case, we had a choice. We could use slugs or we could use IDs. I used to use IDs and then I realized that if I wanted to uh, replicate this on multiple sites and my base uh, site that I use to start all projects, if I use slugs, I could preset this up in the first place uh, where IDs I couldn't because the IDs would change every time I, I, I made a new content area. So I'm using slugs so that seems to work well. And if we take a, oops, I'm in a different widget area aren't I from earlier. Let's go back over there. Too many tabs open. Okay, looking at this, I'll just explain that uh, what this does is uh, that's a insert the layout and that's the fat footer that's uh, unique on here and I also add this bit in which just tells um, it just tells your theme not to include other things that were called fat footer in this area so if we created a post or another sort of custom widget area um, that had fat footer it would start displaying this area so it says only look out for beaver builder templates that have fat footer and that's the same here with our post footer so uh, just make sure that these are saved. If we go back over to our home page here, there we are. We'll see uh, that the big fat ugly filter is now showing as it should do uh, just above the actual footer. And if we go over to, oh, I better just show you that it's working on all pages check myself. Yes, there it is. So it's all displaying there. And we'll just go to the services, which has got nothing on it. OK, and now if we go to our blog post, which had the condition set to it of single blog post, we should get the red footer. And yay, it's a success. So uh, it's as simple as that. Now, if we say we didn't want uh, our footer here, that's an easy job in Dynamic as well. We could get rid of the actual footer. Now, I don't like to do this because um, what goes with all of these areas, the headers and footers, is other markup that comes with Genesis, like schema.org, which uh, helps with Google and SEO. And you've got the correct markup for um, HTML5 and schema uh, included in these. But uh, there is a, a way around that if you really did want to get rid of this and put all of your footer in there. So let's, let's first show you how you can get rid of the existing footer. Again, this is easy with... Um, with dynamic let me just pop over da, 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 da. okay so we need to go back over to dynamic custom and this is where we'll be in the functions and we can use the uh, built-in PHP builder which makes it so much easier so you don't have to keep looking up uh, what sort of filters and actions you need uh, for dynamic with this so I want to remove something so I'll go to remove I look over here and I shall find Somewhere down here, there will be something for removing the footer, sidebar footers. Okay, so when we're removing the footer, we can select this first one called footer. 
which is obvious but we do need to add two more because that only removes the content from the footer it's not removing the CSS wrap or the HTML around it so we have to go in and select the other two which is the footer marker open oops <laughs> hit the wrong button there let's just do that again uh, build action and let's do the same with the close okay build action copy and paste that into our functions don't need to look at this any longer and if we save this these remove actions will get rid of everything from the footer uh, and we'll just refresh this just to see so there we are yes so now we've just got our big ugly footer there and um, the other footer but we've lost something we've lost the um the, the schema code here but what we can do if we don't want to do that and we want to I, I can't tell you how much uh, uh, schema affects things in, in Google listings. Uh, I don't know, but it's just good to do the right thing. So, but if we pop back over to our widget areas, we can just wrap that round the, the fat footer. So if we go back into this text file here, and I've already got a piece of code, the code that we would need. I'm also just adding a bit of class as well. So if I put in the opening tag of schema footer there, and and just wrap this and put the close of the footer the other side of the short code and save that i can do the same with post footer as well i'd need to do the same but if we just pop back here we'll see that it, it doesn't oh, let's properly refresh this okay so it's, it's not showing up here, but if we go and look at our source code and uh, scroll down to where we think that is, da, 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 somewhere down here, that's the form button. We'll be able to see, yeah. So I've got my footer closed there. And if we pop up, let's just find this first. If I look for DW, I'm sure that only comes up. I've got a lot of DWs. Let's just try DW Futter so I can find it quickly. Bear with. Okay, uh, so as we can see, we've now, yes, we've wrapped the Futter area now within the correct uh, schema markup. So that solves that problem. Okay, I think that's footers done. Uh, thank you for putting up with my uh, wandering off and waffle, but I hope that's been useful to you. Please uh, subscribe if you want to get more videos like this and uh, leave me a comment uh, if you think there's something wrong with it. I'd love to hear back from you. And uh, thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.